Hi everyone, this how-to is all about composition. Now that's a huge topic, but today I'm going to give you a few of the rules to consider next time you compose your image. Whether you're working from your own photo reference or your client's photos, there are always a few things you can do to make it a much more aesthetically pleasing image. So I'll start with a nice simple one. This is the rule of thirds. And quite simply, you can split your canvas or your paper in three each way. And this can help you with uh, lining up a horizon line or where to place a main subject. In this example, uh, if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll recognize this as my intro. This is a painting I did of Belfast. And you can see that the sky and the land is split into thirds using the top band of blue as my top third, the next row of clouds as my next third, and the land itself at the bottom third. You can split it in three the other way too, and you can see that I've placed the little group of three hairs just off centre, but that main hair is right dead in the centre. So it's very easy to use the rule of thirds. Next I want to talk about the Fibonacci sequence. This is a series of numbers where a number is found by adding up the two numbers before it. Now, I'm not going to get into a maths lesson but it's a pattern that was discovered a long time ago and it appears in nature and art and generally all over the universe. Now, this sequence of numbers leads to a few different tools we can use in composition. The Fibonacci spiral is not one that I have used, but I love this example of Hokusai's wave. Using the spiral any way up, you can help place the focal parts of your painting in the most pleasing place. But as I said, I haven't actually used the spiral in my own work. But the Fibonacci sequence also gives us the golden ratio. And this I use often. The ratio is approximately 1.618. That's the magic number. So if my painting is 10 inches tall and I want to find the sweet spot to place a horizon, to find the golden ratio I calculate 10 divided by 1.618 and that gives me 6.18 inches. So my measurement to make the horizon is around 6.18 inches. And that's it in its simplest terms and it really does work. You can see that it doesn't just work for horizons. You can use it vertically as well. And you can see that it just leaves your painting looking that bit more balanced if you have this ratio within it. Next, it's the rule of odds. Now you don't always get to decide if you're doing a portrait that has two or four subjects in it. But when you can, it's always good to use an odd number of subjects. Apparently our eyes like to make groups of things and when there's an odd number it keeps us looking from one subject to the next and I find that especially in this portrait that our eye can do a nice circular motion around the three characters. So the rule of odds generally try to use odd numbers a bit like I did with the three bunnies in the first piece overlooking Belfast. Next we have leading lines. It's always good to have some type of perspective lines within your piece. Um, this work by Gustav Kaibot is one of my favourite pieces by him and I love the perspective he creates, leading the viewer down those streets in the distance and also wondering what that couple in the foreground are looking at. But I really love his use of perspective lines, just leading your eye off into the distance. And I believe the, the bottom of the buildings, the the middle line of the painting is in around that golden ratio as well, it looks like it might be. And this is yet another Kaibot piece, another lovely use of perspective leading the viewer down that street in the distance. And this one also brings me on to my next one which is lines of sight. I love how Kaibot here has used that man with his back to us really making us wonder what he's looking at, what he's seeing out the window. 
And if we're talking about lines of sight, I couldn't not show Andrew Wyeth's Christina's World. I love this oil painting and I love how it takes the viewer right into the painting and up to that house in the distance. So lines of sight, a very neat trick to use within your painting, making the viewer feel really a part of it and creating a bit of mystery, taking us off into another place in the painting. And now a couple of pieces by a current artist and friend called Michelle Looking. She also works in soft pastel. If you haven't seen her work already, go and check it out. I'm using a couple of her pieces to demonstrate the use of strong diagonals in your composition. This can work really well, again, to lead the viewer's eye through the painting. And I love how in the painting on the left, those lines crisscross across the body creating beautiful diagonals all over the place. But the overall composition as well, even when it's a little more complicated, like on the left, or even in its pure simplicity, like languid on the right, those diagonals just keep your eye moving across the painting. But really beautiful work from Michelle Looking. I'll add a link to her site in the description below. So the next on the list is cropping and this is probably the tool in composition that I use the most. Often when I'm given a client's photo reference to work from, I can usually find a nicer crop within that image which will make a more aesthetically pleasing painting. So don't be afraid to crop, even if you only take one inch off one side, sometimes it makes all the difference. So play around on Photoshop, what I like to do is set up my my workspace, so if it's a 16 by 12 inch painting, then I drag my image in, I resize it larger than the 16 by 12 inches, and then I play around with it, moving it around on the canvas, finding the sweet spot. I hope you agree that Bud's painting here turned out much better than the original photo reference, just by finding the nice crop within the image. The next artist that I wanted to show you to display some of these rules was, of course, Edgar Degas. I couldn't show you some beautiful pastels without throwing in some Degas. And this is the rule of space. It instantly makes me think of some of Degas' ballerina pastels, as he often likes to clump the ballerinas together in one area, and then have quite a lot of free space around them in the painting. And somehow the collection of overlapping limbs and busy ballet skirts seems to get balanced by that free space around them. So the rule of space, trying to use your negative space to balance out what you want the viewer's focus to be on. The next tip is to off-centre your subject. Now it doesn't always apply, there are times that having something dead centre works best, but quite often I place the main subject ever so slightly to the left or to the right and it just adds a bit more balance. Usually if the subject is looking one way I'll place them on the other side so that it gives their gaze a bit of space across the rest of the image. So a very simple trick just to off-center your main subject. And one of my favorite tools for composition, lastly, it's shallow depth of field. And I couldn't decide which one to show you, I've done so many paintings with this effect and I love using that bokeh blurred background and then some crisp detail in the foreground. Creating the shallow depth of field is perfect in pastel as you can use the softness of the medium, really blur and blend your background, bringing your foreground into focus. So this is one of my favourite compositional tricks and I use it a lot. But can I just say that rules are sometimes made to be broken and I don't follow these rules religiously when I'm coming up with a composition. Quite often I don't measure these things out, I do it by eye. But just knowing these tips and rules sometimes helps you make an important decision and keep you on the right track. You can of course play with these. Sometimes you don't want something to look balanced, you're wanting to create a different mood. But on the whole, Following some of these simple rules will help keep your compositions on track. So now I'm going to show you a few of those rules put into action on one of my recent paintings. In fact, two recent hair paintings 
um, and both are quite different. So with this one, um, you can see I went for a square format. The photo reference that I worked from, I really only used the hair as reference from that. And I changed the composition a lot just to make the painting a bit more unique. Uh, so I went for uh, a shallow depth of field in this piece, which I do in a lot of my work. And I wanted this foreground area to be quite a shallow space so that we feel really up close and personal with the hair. I also centered the eye of the hair so it's exactly in the center of the painting and hopefully really draws the eye of the viewer. Um, I've also made my subject off-centered which I mentioned earlier and also if you can see I roughly split the piece in three different sections so we've got this orangey red area for a third, uh, the out of focus buttercups and then the, the in focus buttercups at the bottom. So a couple of those different rules applied in this one piece. And then a smaller piece that I worked on, um, so this is quite a different composition. And you can see this time I stuck a little more with the uh, composition of the photo reference that I used. But again I went for a nice out of focus background. Um, and I think it really helps the detail in the hair really pop. So I hope a few of these rules will help you when you're composing your own paintings. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Lots more new videos coming soon. And if you haven't checked it out already, check out my Patreon channel for lots of really in-depth tutorials and more videos like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.